Hello, dear class seven students. Welcome back. And today we will be starting our second chapter that is nutrition in animals. So yesterday, let's recall back very quickly. Yesterday we have studied uh, nutrition in plants, how plants prepare their food and recall the process we have learned. Yesterday we studied photosynthesis. That's how plants prepare their food in the presence of sunlight, right? So today we are going to start with new chapter that is nutrition in animals. Clear nutrition in animals. But uh, in the first chapter, we left one topic that is uh, saprotrophs, okay? So because we'll be dealing that here. So to start with, let me first give you this term holozoic, okay? Yes, we humans or animals are holozoic because we depend, we take a complex matter, okay? If we take a solid food, we, we take solid food, right? Then we fall under this category. So we are also a holozoic animals, clear? Now let's talk about these saprotrophs. Saprotrophs, this is a mode of nutrition where organisms, they feed on dead and decaying matter, okay? Dead and decaying matter, dead and decaying matter. Decaying matter. Some examples may be like mushroom, you have seen those umbrella type, uh, that, that has a shape of umbrella thing. Or uh, they grow, they grow in a moist or a rotten wood, right? So I'm sure you are clear with uh, the, the mushroom, you are familiar with the mushroom. Uh, those are like fungi, clear? So they are uh, separate troughs because they feed on dead and decaying matter, clear? So today we will talk about holozoic animals holozoic nutrition, because we human beings fall under this, clear? So, to study the digestion, to study the digestion in humans, that's, that's the first topic that we're going to study, we will study in details. So, we are a holozoic animals, and we'll be studying uh, the process involved in holozoic nutrition. Clear? Holozoic nutrition. And what is holozoic? Let me repeat it again. You might be thinking why I am repeating again. Because I'm, why I'm repeating because these are important. Clear? So holozoic means taking a complex matter, taking a solid food. So now there are certain steps, and these steps are important. The first step will be ingestion, okay? Ingestion. Ingestion means taking food, okay? So first we take our food, like we start from the journey, start from the mouth, right? So taking solid food. So that's the first step. Now the second is digestion. Our food, it has to be digest or else uh, it will be harmful, right? We wouldn't get that energy required. Now what is digestion? That means breaking down of complex substance into simpler substance, clear? Because we are taking a solid food in a big amount, in a, in a complex amount. Now this has to uh, break down and this will happen in the mouth, clear? In the buccal cavity, which we will discuss later. So digestion, simply it is breaking down of a complex substance into a simpler substance. Like let's say carbohydrates, that's a nutrient which is involved in a food, right? So now carbohydrate, uh, carbohydrate, now let's say starch, okay? Starch. Starch, it's a complex carbohydrate. Now, this starch, it breaks down into a simple carbohy carbohydrate that can be in a form of sugar. So in the digestion, all this breaking down happened. Okay, from uh, the complex to a simpler one. Now, after digestion, what happens? Absorption. Absorption, okay? So now, all the digested food, all the digested food, whatever food was digested, digested now it passes into the blood. It passes, in, passes into the blood or lymph. Clear? It passes, the digested food passes into the blood or limb. Clear? So this is 
uh, a form of absorbed food. Now this absorbed food now will, the next step will be assimilation. Assimilation is when the absorbed food, they passes uh, and then are sent to all the departments because our body needs energy, right? And so all the absorbed food, the energy that they give out will be sent to various activity, will be sent for various activity. Clear? And the last one, the last one, it's all about ingestion. That means throwing out. Clear? Ingestion. So all the undigested food will be removed. So this uh, ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and ingestion are the process involved in the digestion of holozoic animals or holozoic nutrition. Clear? So now we'll study the uh, digestion in human in details. Clear? So this is the process that is involved. Clear? So now you have to get familiar with these words. So please note down all this process. Ingestion, that is the taking of food. Digestion, breaking down of complex into simpler one. Absorption, the digested food passes into the limb and assimilation where the food, the energy that we get are pass uh, to perform like all the activities. Now the ingestion means, uh, that means the removing of the undigested food, clear? So note this one down and we'll start with the digestion in human beings. Okay, so students, we'll start with digestion in human. Okay, whatever food you take, what happens? So it's going to be an interesting chapter. Okay, so we'll explore everything one by one, all the steps, there are steps involved, okay? But we'll be, we, we will use all the steps that are involved in the holozoic, just the, uh, the one which I explained just now, clear? So everything starts from mouth, isn't it? Everything starts from mouth and then it ends in the anus, clear? So uh, the digestive system, in the, uh, the digestive system, it happens, everything, everything takes place in elementary kennel. Elementary kennel. Okay, elementary kennel. And it's a, it's a continuous kennel, clear? And all the steps involved in this kennel, it's a nine meter, okay? This elementary kennel is a nine meter, a nine meter long can, kennel. It is coiled and that is present inside our body, clear? Nine meter, you imagine this, okay, just approximately one meter will be this much, then see, nine meter, long coil is present inside the human body, clear? And the shapes will be different, okay? So it starts, this elementary starts from the mouth, then our oral cavity, the um, buccal cavity, it is known as, and till anus, clear? So there are various organs under this elementary canal. And I will uh, mention everything, I'll write the organs step by step here. Now the first one for, the, for this elementary canal, it starts from the mouth. So let's write mouth, okay? So in other words, mouth is a door, okay? Uh, it's the entrance, okay? Now the second one is the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity. Clear? This buccal cavity or Oral cavity, okay, oral cavity, clear? Now, the third one, okay, the third one would be esophagus, 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 okay? Or the other word for esophagus would be foot pipe, which is present, uh, which is this part, which is present in the neck part, it goes down, clear? So esophagus or food pipe. 
My dear class seven students, you're all smart, and I'm sure you'll remember all this, because this, you have to feel it, okay? You have to now, if I say a mouth, you know this is our mouth, the buccal cavity, oral cavity, that means when you open your mouth, there will be a teeth, there will be tongue, saliva, all this will fall under this oral cavity, right? Then esophagus or the food pipe. Now, after, after this, after this buccal cavity, the next would be uh, esophagus. It's a food pipe, like starting from this side, neck. Next will be stomach, okay? Stomach, I'm sure you know where your stomach is, clear? Stomach, actually it's a flattened, you know the letter J, right? J like in Joker, okay, J, it's a flattened J shape. Our stomach is actually a flattened J shape, it's like this, clear? Flattened, flattened J shape, that's the, uh, the shape of the stomach. The next starts small intestine, small intestine, clear? Small intestine, we have two intestines, one is small intestine, we have uh, the other one is large intestine. Next up would be, okay, I will write it over here, okay? So it's a continuation, dear students. Large intestine, after small intestine, it is large intestine. And large intestine ends in a rectum, okay, rectum. R-E-C-T-U-M, rectum, okay? rectum. And then the last, where will it end? The elementary canal, it starts from the mouth, buccal cavity, will end in anus. Okay, where will throw all the waste? Okay, so these are the organs that is involved, that is uh, present in the elementary canal. So you know you have seen a train, right? You have a compartment, compartment, compartment. So same as like it's uh, the digestive system, it's a continuous, clear. And we all have different, different, different compartments, but unlike the train, uh, the train, everything, all the shapes are same. But here in this continuous canal, the shapes are different, right? Mouth is different, you all know. Now the food pipe will be different. Now the stomach is uh, some, like it, it bulges and it's a J-shape, flattened J-shape. Now large intestine will be large from the name itself, you know, and the small intestine, you know, and then the, we have the, will end in anus, okay? So now please get familiar with all this because we'll be starting, we'll study all the organs one by one in details, okay? Because the main concept is for you to learn. So I'll go slow because I want you to learn because this is very important and till class 10, uh, you, even in class 10, you're going to study this one in details, clear? Okay, so we'll start with the mouth part, the buccal cavity, okay? So, uh, okay, the mouth. Mouth, you all know we have, okay, uh, you'll see we have a movable lips, right? Our lips are movable. If it's not movable means you won't be able to speak, you won't be able to chew, you won't be able to put like food inside your mouth, right? So we have a mo movable lips. So everything starts from mouth. So it's like the door, okay? Where you open and then people, so in, at house, like if you open the door, people get inside, right? So same as you open your mouth and then the food gets inside, okay? So the journey starts from the mouth. Clear? The journey starts from the mouth, you all know, right? So journey starts from the mouth. Now, the second one. The buccal cavity or the oral cavity, okay? Buccal cavity or the oral cavity. Now this is when you open, when you open your mouth, what you'll see? You see your teeth, you see your tongue, and you see what? You see saliva. So these are present in this oral cavity, clear? So the first thing, let's say tongue. The second one, let's, uh, let's study about saliva. The third one is teeth. So we'll study all these three, uh, these three under the oral cavity in detail, clear? So tongue, okay? So tongue, uh, I'm sure if I, if, I t if I tell you to write at least one use of tongue, you know, right? Without the tongue, you won't be able to speak. Without the tongue, right now, I won't be able to speak, right? And then tongue, you know, whenever you chew food, the tongue, uh, it, 
your tongue you can twist, you can roll. So tongue, it mixes, it helps to mix the food with saliva. Okay? Okay. Now, uh, this tongue, in the opening part, is free. It's free to move, right? It's free to move, but uh, it is attached. It is attached with the buccal, the floor of the buccal cavity. Clear? And then saliva. This saliva, from where do we get? Saliva, we have sal salivary gland, okay? From there, it secretes saliva. And this saliva is, um, it helps, it has an enzyme, a saliva, uh, it has a salivary, uh, I'll write the enzyme name here, salivary amylase. Amylase. You can note this one down because this helps in breaking down the starch into sugar, right? A complex carbohydrate into simpler carbohydrates. Clear? Now, this saliva is also like helpful. It also, see, uh, it, 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 it also, it's like a medicine, okay? If there is some bleeding gums or if there's some ulcer kind, saliva also acts as a medicine, clear? Now, uh, teeth, teeth is very important and we uh, see, this teeth is very important. Without the teeth, you won't be able to chew, right? And we will study about the teeth more in details in the next class, clear? But I'll give you a brief introduction about the teeth, clear? So teeth, we have for a normal, for a permanent, I'm, I'm sure by now, class seven student, you, have, you all have the permanent teeth now. The milk teeth is gone. The milk teeth, uh, we have only 20 milk teeth, okay, 20 milk teeth. And by six to eight years or nine years, all the milk teeth are uh, fall, fall, uh, all the milk teeth fall away, clear. And then you get uh, milk teeth are replaced by a permanent teeth. So I'm sure by now you all have got this permanent teeth, and we have 32 permanent teeth. And we under the teeth we have molar, premolar, canine incisors, and we they all have a different function, like to bite, to tear. So everything, this is going to be very interesting, okay? The front part of the teeth, which is incisors, it's not just to make you look attractive, you might be thinking, but it's actually for biting, clear? So stuff like that, we are going to continue in the next class, okay, students? So please note this one down. Buccal cavity, tongue, saliva, and teeth. And uh, next class, we will study the teeth in details, clear? So thank you so much, students. Uh, we'll continue this in next class.